What's going on guys? Thanks for tuning back in to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying up a stone fly. This right here is just a big black stone fly. I've primarily been tying this for steelhead. It's a really easy pattern to tie. I wanted something just easy and quick that I can tie a bunch up really quick because I lose a lot of them to the bottom uh, fishing for steelhead. As well as in the spring here, the rivers are really high and dirty. So I wanted something a little bit bigger of a profile to kind of push some more water and maybe trigger some more bites. So I'm gonna get a fresh hook in the vise and we'll get going with this tutorial. The hook we have in the vise right now is our Fly Fiend 350WG in a size 10. I have that paired up with a four millimeter slotted tungsten bead and also have about four to five wraps of 0.020 lead free wire. That's just gonna help that bead stay in place there as well as just add a little bit more weight. The thread we're gonna be using is just some Vivas GSP. This is um, black and it's in uh, 50D. So I'm just gonna start my thread right behind that lead. I'm gonna cut that out. I'm just gonna come in here with a little bit of super glue. This is just a Gorilla gel glue. And I'm just gonna put a little dab right on top of this lead. Don't need much. Um, that's just gonna kinda secure it there. And I know that it's not going to go anywhere. So I'm just gonna dress this hook shank to about where the barb would be. And for our tail, we're just gonna be using some black goose biots. And I'm gonna tie these in on top of the shank rather than the sides. I just think it gives it more of a kind of like a 3D um, look to it rather than having them coming off the sides. I've been tying um, a lot of my stoneflies and uh, mayflies and stuff kind of like that. I, I just like the way it looks but um, you can definitely tie them on the side. So I'm just tying them right on top just like that. I think it just gives it more of a kind of a more of a profile to the to the overall look of the fly. So I'm just going to bring my thread back up to right behind that lead with the goose biots. I can come in and just cut these out. Clean that up a bit. Now the next material we're tying in is our rib. And for our rib, we're just gonna be using some D-rib. This, uh, this is the vinyl rib by UTC. This is in black, and this is in the MDG size, the mid size. So I'm just gonna get about six inches here. And I'm gonna put this in on the side of the shank facing towards the camera and I'm gonna have it right right behind that lead. So it's going to kind of fill in that spot, that bump spot that we had there from the lead wraps. I'm just gonna bring that back up, just like so. And I usually leave a little tag here just so I can um, get in close just a little bit easier with a little bit of a bigger tag and a little just having a little nub there I'm um, just saves a little bit of time it's like so so for the body of the fly we're just gonna be using some Hemingway's uh, check nymph dubbing this is in black and we're just gonna dub a very very uh, tight noodle here. And 
So we're going to start this right at the base of that body. We're just going to make some nice touching wraps, touching up that body. We're just building a little bit of a taper here. And ideally you want to come to the right where you tied in your rib with the uh, the end of the um, wire there, your weight. So I'm kind of just building up this taper a bit, just like that. Now I'm going to grab this rib, I'm going to come underneath the body and just make open spiral wraps up the body. I like to pull a little tight on this uh, just so it kind of adds a little bit of segmentation. And once it's wet, um, it'll add a lot more um, segmentation to it. So once you cut that little piece out, we're going to build up a thorax. And the thorax is the same dubbing, the Hemingway's uh, Czech Nymph dub. And this I'm going to dub a little bit looser just so it has a little bit more volume and um, I have a little bit more stragglies hanging out. So it looks like a little bit more buggy. So I'm not putting in a full thorax right now. All I'm doing is kind of having a place to tie in my legs and kind of have an idea of how far up and down I'm gonna put my legs and I'll show you here in a second. So for our legs, we're just going to be using some uh, Wopsy round rib. Um, I, I originally tied this with the same D rib, but um, it's not round. It's kind of like a, a flat. So I, um, I started tying it with this uh, round rib and um, I like it a lot more. And you can use um, like rubber leg material if you like. I just like this, uh, this D rib or this uh, round rib. Um, it's got like a nice little sheen to it. And I think it looks really, really cool in the water. So I'm going to put a little knot in that side before I tie it in. Now I'm just going to grab this side. I like to have a kind of a, some extra round rib just so I can put a knot in there. Just have another one coming off this side. So I got two little knots there. I can just trim this side up to a reasonable length. So as you can see there, I kind of have um, how far I wanted my to split these. So I have kind of a I don't know, about a bead's length of room between the two. So I want them to splay out kind of one to the front and one to the back. I don't want them kind of just two coming right off the uh, the side. So that's why I kind of split them and I'm gonna have put a little bit more dubbing in there to, uh, to, to keep them split. So I'm just gonna grab another little piece of this round rib. And all I do is just put a little uh, overhand knot in it. Nothing, nothing fancy. I'm just going to put this on this side, trying to line up the two together on the front. Then I can just knot this one in the back. Sometimes it is tricky to get it through, but there we go. So 
I'm just gonna pull that tight. Then just trim that to a reasonable length so my thread doesn't get stuck all in there. It's like so. Now I can grab a little bit more of this dubbing. My throw axe is pretty much already um, built. I just wanna kinda of put some loose dubbing in here just to kind of keep these spread. Just like so. And you can kind of use your hands to put these where you want. But that's kind of uh, how I like them looking, how they're splayed like that. Now for the wing bud, we're gonna be using just some thin skin. This is just in um, modeled black and what I'm going to do is just cut a little notch a V notch in this thin skin just like so I'm going to put this right on top and ideally you want this to just poke past your thorax So I'm gonna try and get that nice and centered on top. Got two wraps in there and come in. Cut that out. That can just do a nice four or five turn whip finish in there. Make sure it's nice and tight. I can cut out my thread. Now to build this up, I, um, I usually use thick, uh, Loon Outdoors, um, UV clear fly finish and thick, but I ran out so I've been using this knot sense. Um, I use it on my leaders and stuff. It's just like a thick UV resin and um, it works like it cures pretty hard. So that's what I've been using for that. So I'm just gonna put a, a little blob on here. It's pretty thick stuff. So I'm just gonna like build up a base with this. Then I can come in with my flow because this uh, stuff stays tacky. So I'm going to just build a, my base up with this stuff just so I don't have a uh, flow going everywhere down the thorax and stuff. So I'm just going to Coat all this thread up over the head or over the bead, just like that. And then I come with my light, hit that for about 10 seconds. Then I'm just gonna come over it with some uh, fluorescing flow. So as you can see there on top of that wing bud, it's just kind of uh, clear, but once I put this fluorescing flow on it, it's really gonna make it pop. So I'm kind of just going over all of this. It's like so. Then I can come, as you can see there, while it's curing really bright now. So once that's cured, you're, uh, you're good to go. This is really uh, durable stuff. Um, I've had fish come underneath it with teeth and it's, uh, it's never ripped out on me. So I'm just gonna grab my scissors here and just kinda cut these up to length. And you can also downsize this um, if you want to tie it for, you know, like resident trout. Or just tie it this size for resident trout. Um, I pretty much fish this for just steelhead. Um, just because it's so heavy, it uh, it gets down really quick. So I hope you liked today's tutorial, guys. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. If you want to check the list of all the materials I use, you can check that down in the description. 
If you have any questions about the fly or anything like that, you can drop that down in the comment section below. Tie a few of these up. If you are uh, fishing for steelhead, good luck to you for the opener. Thanks a lot again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.